On the measuring tools, uh, what is quite interesting are what are known as foreign measures. So to the average person in England, and you'll say, how long is a foot? The usual reply is 12 inches. Yes, sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. But if you sort of try and quantify how long a, a, an inch is, they can't even tell you. They'll just say about that. However, uh, in fact, they don't even know that there are foreign inches, foreign feet length, uh, foreign measures, because they think that there is only one measure, or certainly was only one measure, uh, what in the trade is known as the London foot. Uh, not English foot, it was, they're always marked London. And uh, here we have a range of uh, some rules which show the difference in the feet length. And here we have the first one we've put down, and this is the London measure. It's marked London, and the length from uh, the, the uh, beginning to the end is what we call uh, a foot length. But underneath it, it says Russia. Now then, we've something very different here, and there is one of our inches, and this is a Russian inch, which measures approximately one and three quarter inches of our measure. Huge, like a huge country, their inches were huge. They didn't call them inches, of course, they had a name in of Russian. However, the, the uh, rule underneath it has London again on the top edge, and underneath it it says Russia Decimal. And this one is actually less than our inch. You will notice also that on the uh, Russian, first Russian uh, inches I showed you, uh, the eight, their inch is divided into sixteenths of an inch. And in the Russian decimal is divided into twentieths of an inch, tenths, twentieths. So they, uh, that's the decimal part of it, but also they've, uh, they've reduced the size of the, the measure. Now, I don't know why that's been done, but that just shows some of the uh, confusion that can arise when you're talking about these different measures. We always think of being 10 inches in a foot. Well, this is a Japanese foot from here to here, uh, and there, there are 10 inches in the Japanese foot each divided into tenths of an inch. So each one of these divisions is a hundredth of a foot. We also had uh, decimal feet in English uh, and they were used by architects and that was ten inches to the London foot each divided into tenths of an inch. However in Sweden they tried to uh, essentially do one better but I'm not sure whether they did. And uh, if we look at this one, we have on the bottom edge this time, Sweden Gamla. Now this is their old measure, and there is the Swedish foot length. And it's divided into uh, twelfths, twelve inches to the foot. But they decided they'd go decimal. And so they brought in Sweden Naya, which is that. Ten inches to the foot, divided into tenths of an inch. So, unless you knew which actually which uh, measure you're using, you could actually, if you were saying something was uh, four inches long, it could either be that four inches or that four inches. Uh, think of the problems there. So, nothing is easy. Now, these four rules show just a small amount of uh, the confusion there was a measurement up to the introduction of the metric system, which we're not going to discuss today particularly, uh, although we have a, me a metric measure on the upper edge of the uh, Japanese one. Uh, but uh, whilst that became universal, thank the Lord, in many ways, uh, there's a measure here, which is that Chesterman's made, which was known as a Many Nations tape, produced by James Chesterman in the late 19th century 
uh, I suppose around 1870, uh, around that period, or it would be made over quite a number of years. And it was designed for people who were travelling abroad to give them some indication of what their standard, in whatever country they were in, what their standard of length was in comparison, say, to any other standard of length, including uh, the English or the London foot. And here we have a, a, a steel tape, which has on, on this face, uh, it says London on the bottom edge. And so the London measure is 12 inches at there. The middle range of that is Burgos, which is a, a measure used in Portugal and Spain. And it was also widely used in South America, where they uh, colonised those places. And on the top edge we have it in metric. But more interestingly, it's on the reverse of this rule that the interest lies. Uh, so we have a zero line at the beginning. And uh, on, on this one we start off, the shortest measure is Catalan. Then Spain. Portugal, I'm not going to read them all, but we go Sicily, Genoa, Naples, Spain again, because it's a different sort of measure in Spain, Leipzig, Hamburg, Bremen, Bavaria, Sweden, Switzerland, England. Now if we turn it over where it says England, we will find that just there it's the 12 inches, the English foot length. And so it goes on right to the very end to well over a metre in length of many, many, and that's what they called it, a many nations rule. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, steel tape measure was supplied in a, a metal case uh, and it had a spring retractor on it so it all coiled up into a tiny uh, waistcoat size coil about that diameter, about two inches diameter. And it was something some people could take abroad and, as I say, do comparisons. The problems of uh, knowing what foot length you were going to uh, come against uh, in the world at that time were absolutely appalling. There was no standardisation anywhere. And it's only with the advent of the metric system over the last few, ye few years, around 1970 in England, it's still not standard in America and the United States. Uh, they still use the uh, London measure, uh, largely, except in the academic world they do use metric. So they, they have two systems. They have the English system in industry and they have, in, in, in the academic world, they uh, work on metric. But this uh, illustrates some of the problems that they had. We've already discussed uh, others with the steel rules but this just compounds what knowledge we had and one last measure which is a linen tape measure uh, was a tape measure around about three foot long and it's a Chinese tailor's tape and that says one foot two foot three foot in Chinese measure not English measure, of course, because these are Chinese tailors. Do we get out to four foot? We must do. There we are. There's a symbol for four foot. Interestingly, um, yesterday I took this measure uh, to a friend of mine, and there was a, a Chinese student there, and he drew on the whiteboard these days uh, that symbol in Chinese in chalk on in on the well, on black on the whiteboard uh, that measure and it wasn't quite like that this must be the anglicized form of the Chinese symbol <laughs> very interesting other ways rules could be used for export were in advertising and here we have a variety of rules. I'll put, move that one to there. Uh, and 
Uh, this one is for a, a, a firm in Durban, South Africa. And it says Warden and Hotchkiss Limited. Telephone number 383, so this must have been made around 1900. 209 West Street, Durban, Post Office Box 399. And what they made was galvanised iron, plane and corrugated mining and tool steels, all sizes. Bedsteads, safes, tubes and fittings, lead sheet and pipe sanitary fittings. So this was a giveaway to somebody. Turn it over. There is a, a, a four-fold steel rule, uh, sorry, three-fold steel rule that one can put in the pocket. They even went to America selling uh, these uh, rules. George B. Carpenter and Co. Chicago. Cordage Twines. Lath Yarn. Mill and Railroad Supplies. They must have been big. And Chesterman supplied that rule to them. Uh, both those would be around 1900, I guess. Whilst on the uh, more recent rules that have been made for export, there's one there for Milan, uh, the Dominion Oil Refining Company, and another uh, Italian rule uh, made for Italy, another Milan company, Maserati, Maserati Technica Industries. So, Chestermans were quite large on exporting uh, their products across the world.